Today on Cooking with a Lion, I'll be making a delicious wintertime dessert, my boozy apple clafoutis. Plus what I consider to be the easiest way of coring an apple. And it's all happening right now. Let's get started. The first step to making the clafoutis, the boozy clafoutis, is grab yourself a small saucepan to which we'll add two cups of whole milk. Whole milk gives a little bit more flavor, the fat helps with the structure. We're also gonna add two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Now what I'll do is I'll put this over at low heat and stir it occasionally until it looks like almost microfoam is on the top and steam begins to come up. At that point, simply turn it off and we'll move on to the next step. With the milk and butter mixture steaming beautifully over there, that's ready. So now it's time actually to make the rest of the batter. We'll start with a fairly large bowl, because so we're going to whisk like crazy in here. We're going to start with all-purpose flour. It's a dump and whisk. Instead of a dump and stir, it's a dump and whisk. Always tell. Also have some granulated sugar that goes in, equal parts. I have five large eggs. I always like to crack them in a separate bowl, so just in case it's a little shell, I can pick that up before having to sort of snake it out of all of that. Okay, it's a little hint for you. Then, this is where the boozy part comes in. If you have amaretto, that works, but I find that Grand Marnier is one of my favorites that goes beautifully with this recipe, and there's also a little bit of vanilla extract in here as well. There we go. And, surprise, surprise, this is white miso, or sweet miso. Now, miso, it's a fermented soy product, but it also gives the salt that we need in this dish, but it also has like this different type of sweetness, not just sugar, but like a sweetness that's sort of over here. And then the apples are over here and it all works out beautifully. Trust me, that goes in as well. And take your time on this. Just really whisk it until all of it is beautifully homogenized. So it's all nicely whisked together. So take your time. This batter looks perfect. It's nice and smooth, but now we want to temper in that hot milk butter mixture. Here we go. Tempering is the equivalent of tapping your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. What we want to do is very slowly add the milk mixture to the batter I have in here. If I add this all at once, it would probably scramble the eggs. So if you do it slowly, what that does is it raises the temperature of the batter and it also makes it so much better as far as the finished texture instead of just adding cold milk to this mixture. And once you're about halfway, you can start streaming in the hot milk a little bit faster, but don't get ahead of yourself. It's better to take longer in this step than short. And that is it. With the batter completely done, it is time to move on to the apples. For this recipe, I find that peeled apples gives it a better finished texture. Now, growing up in Arlington, Virginia, I would spend a lot of time in my grandparents' house, and my grandmother would go through a lot of apples, apple pie, uh, apple sauce, apple bundt cakes, and she wouldn't rely on a peeler like I am now, a classically trained television chef. She had this tiny knife, and I, I swear, I think it was made of pewter, um, but it was a tiny parry knife, and she would peel this, like, master chef style, and she would just bang through it, while watching television. That is how many apples she peeled in her lifetime. I'm not quite there yet. I have not earned my granny apple peeling stripes, so I'm just using a peeler. Well, now that it's peeled, what I want to do is slice it around the core. And so if I know the bottom is here, right over my finger, I'll slice it in four different right angles. Just turn it, go around the core, and put that to the side. And then, again, for this recipe, I want it very thinly sliced, probably like a sixteenth inch to an eighth of an inch thick. This apple goes into the bowl with the two other, let's say, medium-sized apples. It's just over a pound, maybe a pound and a quarter. This goes over here. Then, it's time to get cooking. Grab yourself a large, non-stick saute pan, to which add three tablespoons of unsalted butter. We also have a quarter cup of granulated sugar and one and a half teaspoons of uh, ground cinnamon and a tiny little bit, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cloves. 
I'll place this over at medium heat. Once the uh, butter and sugar and everything starts to melt together, I'll give it one good stir. Then the apples go in and I'll cook it for about five minutes. It'll start to sort of pull out some moisture from the apples, but then it evaporates and starts getting a little bit on the thicker side. At that point, I'll add the batter and pop it in the oven at 375 degrees for 30 minutes. I've let this boozy clefu tea rest for 10 minutes in the pan. Why would I do that? Well, when you saw it cook, it souffles up and it's very gentle and light, but then you want it to sort of relax and deflate back in the pan. But I don't want to cut in the pan because it's non-stick. So how do I get this thing out? What you want to do, and it's, it's cool to the point where I can hold on to it pretty well. What you want to do is you want to take a cutting board or a plate or something large enough to accommodate this size. Place it on top. You can actually see where the pan is. And then what I'll do, see how hot it is underneath. Yeah, pretty hot. And then what I'll do is invert this. Okay, one quick flip, right? Here we go. Let's see how that turned out. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The reason why I wasn't able to pull it out of the nonstick pan is because when those apples start to caramelize on the bottom, you actually have caramel, which is very sticky. It's delicious, but it's sticky. If I were to try to pull that out, it's too soft, it's too delicate, and the whole thing would rip right apart. So you have to flip it out, and look at this beauty. Unexpected, right? It's this beautiful, dark caramelization. You know, it looks burned, but it is far, far, far from burned. That's just caramelized sugar on the bottom, and I think that's beautiful. Now, if you want to serve this dish with the apple side up, that can happen too, but you have to let it cool perhaps even longer because uh, it'll firm up as it cools. Or you could try one of these. Just go ahead and cut yourself a nice slice. All right. And then cross your fingers and wish and hope. It usually works. Get your knife, and make sure it's nice and flat, really parallel, and then we'll see if this inverts again. And that's not bad. If any of the apples tend to fall off, you can sneak those as a little snack or put them back in the way you would, let's say, a, a puzzle piece. And that looks pretty darn good. I'm ready to dive right in. Who wouldn't be? Well, people more patient than I am. If you want these apples to stay on top, let it cool for probably another 30 minutes. And what'll happen is because it's inverted, it compresses the apples into the top of me. I'm not that patient. I'm the youngest of three boys. This is officially my favorite dessert for late autumn and winter, whenever apples are in season. At first bite, it's this custardy, it's like a, it's like a warm flan or like a, or like a creme brulee, but with apples. It has a seasonality to it because immediately you get this warmth of the caramelized apples, but with that cinnamon and then a touch of that um, powdered clove, only an eighth of a teaspoon, but it really comes through. This bottom portion, funnily enough, this caramelized portion underneath, reminds me of this French pastry called cannelée. It's a thin batter like this, but it cooks at a really high temperature, so the outside gets crispy, dark, 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 darker than this, but the inside is very custardy. But you also have the apples, and it sort of reminds me of um, like a German apple pancake mixed with, uh, like, like I was saying, like a custard or a flan with a little cannelé, and of course, like apple pie, because as soon as you walk in, you're like, who's making apple pie? And you realize you don't have to make a crust. And it's like this ethereal, light, wonderful texture for adults only. Yes, there is a quarter cup of booze in here. This recipe is so easy. If you have an oven and a whisk, you can make this happen. And when it comes to texture, if you want it softer and succulent like this, eat it right away. If you want to serve it apple side up, give it a go. But if you want it to be perfect and firmer, you can let it sit to room temperature and it will firm up. And better yet, for tomorrow's breakfast, you got that right. It'll be sitting cooling in the fridge right there for tomorrow morning or the next day or the next day for you to enjoy with your morning cup of coffee. And that sounds absolutely delicious. Cheers.